Hello and welcome to iBuzz. I'm your host, Nasheen Bukhari, bringing you the best entertainment news from Showbiz World. In today's episode, we will discuss Conan O'Brien's leap of faith, which he took just yesterday, announcing on, on his channel that he will be taking a break from his 28 years career from Late Night Show, followed by a discussion on the rock band Pakistani music. First things first, let me quickly take you to the top stories of the day. Judge orders Kevin Spacey accuser to reveal his identity. Conan O'Brien sets an end date for his late night talk show on TBS. EDM producer Pierce Fulton dies at age 28 following tragic struggle with his mental health. Bruce Willis joins Jesse Metcalf and Chad Ma Michael Collins in a new action trilogy entitled The Fortress. The first Eternals footage is released, including a glimpse of Angelina Jolie and Gemma Chan. Moving to the top story of the day, Conan O'Brien announced an end date for his long-running talk show on TBS which will also mark the end of O'Brien's 28 years career as a late night show host. O'Brien revealed that the last episode of his show will air on June 24th and will feature some clips from his last 11 years as well as some special guests. To have a further discussion on this topic, we have Sukaina Benzikor, who is an entertainment and showbiz journalist and a TV presenter. Sukaina, welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Thank you for having me. Alongside, we have Sam Cook from Cardiff, who is a television presenter best known for working across nine channels and local TV. Sam, welcome. Good morning. Hello. Thank you for having me back on. This decision, this huge decision of ending his 28 years career of late night show host. Did you see that coming? I did see it coming, yes. Uh -huh. um, because I think everybody's kind of moving on to just wanting to get content quick ready mm -hmm. content um, and so unfortunately tv i feel is kind of dying um and i think someone like conan who's been in the industry for almost mm. 30 years you know he's been fronting this show for you know 11 years it's kind of it's time for him to move on i think or uh, you know onwards and upwards i think so yes i did see it coming i just wasn't sure when Right. And Sam, are you in support of the decision or did, did it, you know, turn you a little sad being a fan? Yeah, well, I mean, it did turn me a little sad because mm -hmm. I will spend a lot of time, um, you know, in researching films mm -hmm. and TV programs that are coming out. Um, I'll spend a lot of time <clears throat> going through YouTube and looking at other interviews that have, uh, that have come out. And Conan is always up there on top. Um, mm -hmm. An interview that sticks in my mind of Conan's is his one with Harrison Ford uh, in yeah. which um, basically Harrison Ford just goes mental and, and destroys the Millennium Falcon. Uh, and there's another one out there uh, where um, Conan offers Harrison Ford some, some money to give him Star Wars spoilers. So, um, mm. so yeah, I think it is kind of a bittersweet ending. Mm -hmm. um, but like Shakana said there, I think, uh, you know, TV is slowly but surely becoming redundant and, and other content is, is is coming and the way they produce videos like this uh, is changing. Right. Um, Sukena, uh, Conan actually, we're not going to say, say that he stole the show, but he got the show from David Letterman. Uh, do you think there is a comparison between David Letterman and Conan O'Brien? I think they're quite both, you know, different characters and they're both really different in their own ways. But I think Conan O'Brien is, is <clears throat> It's, I would personally I see him as a talk show legend mm -hmm. um, I think he's always been very out there mm -hmm. you know he's his humor is up there um, so I think they're very different um, but you know he's been doing this for ages now and I mm -hmm. think he's he's done such a great job of it um, and you know to be hosting a show for 11 years mm -hmm. um, I think it is his time now to, to so we can see what else he can do really and i think getting this deal with hbo max um mm -hmm. is very exciting and um i, I can't wait to see what this show is going to be like right sam what are your expectations from his uh, upcoming series on hbo 
Well, HBO seems to be the platform that um, mm. all these different personalities want to go to. Um, you know, we've recently had the success of films such as Zack, Sy- Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League, which has gone mental on HBO Max. And a lot of these different companies are headed towards uh, that that new form of television. So, um, yeah, I think it's very exciting. But like I said, bittersweet because he has made several great memories from TBS um, mm-hmm. with him. Andy Richter and the band, uh, they, they they produce new and very exciting entertaining content on TBS. So I will be interested to see how they do it now on HBO Max. Um, it, it's going to be hard to, uh, to to compete with what they've done before. Um, you know, uh, Conan also, I, I didn't realise this, but he had a very, very brief spell of hosting The Tonight Show mm. just before his appearance um, on TBS in his own show. Um, so yeah, you know he's moved about a bit uh, over the years, and you know he started his career doing what the Simpsons and, and do, Saturday do Night Live. Do you expect Live. any changes? Because it is also predicted that HBO is planning to give him more freedom and more space because uh, O'Brien is not the kind of person who likes to work under restrictions. So do you do you expect some some change in his work this time? Yes, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think if you're given that kind of creative freedom and you're not mm-hmm. put in a bubble um, like he potentially was on TBS, <laughs> um, the for, like I said, the format on uh, TBS was coming mm-hmm. a li- was becoming a little bit outdated. Um, you, you, he's competing with the likes of Stephen Colbert and mm-hmm. Jimmy Fallon, and, and it, it's very hard to kind of assert your own stamp there, despite the fact he's been doing it a very long time, and, and to keep it fresh and new. Mm-hmm. So I think this new venture to to HBO, it will allow him the, the creative freedom to do some, some other things. I'm excited. Right. Uh, Sukena, uh, some critics have, uh, you know, they have commented, commented that late night television may never be the same. Uh, do you agree, agree with this statement or do you think that we have like ample uh, sh- late night show hosts and it's not going to make any difference if Conan O'Brien leaves the screen. You know what? I think I, I, I don't. I do agree with that. I think mm-hmm. that we're constantly changing, and we're constantly, like we, Sam said, you know, late night talk shows are now becoming a bit outdated. Um, obviously, we've got things like James Corden, mm-hmm. late night show. Um, and I mean, just look how creative he is with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can really see the difference between his show and, you know, Conan O'Brien. So I think if he really wants to mm-hmm. stay up there um, mm-hmm. in terms of being like the best talk show host, I think he really needs to up his game and mm-hmm. yeah, start being more creative, thinking out the box. So I'm really excited for him to be on HBO Max. I think this is a great thing for him. Um, and you know, he's already announced it. He said he's gonna have special guests. Um, it's gonna be kind of like a, an hour long finale. We're gonna be mm-hmm. looking back at all his career. So he's already got big plans and big ideas mm-hmm. for it. Um, and so I'm, you know, really looking forward to seeing what's gonna, right, what it's gonna be like. Really. Sam, what are your thoughts on late night television not being the same? Um, here in the United Kingdom, we don't have the same experience of mm-hmm. late night television as potentially you, you, you know, you guys have out there. Um, mm-hmm. We we've got the likes of Graham Norton here, and the, and the thing about mm-hmm. this is the thing. This is my own personal opinion towards late night talk shows. Is um, you know you've got the likes of Graham Norton and Jonathan Ross in the United Kingdom, mm-hmm. and both of the well, Graham Norton's in particular is he finds new and exciting ways to keep the format fresh and original. I'm never bored when watching the Graham Norton show, despite the fact Mm. it has been on, you know, the majority of years in my life. Um, So um, I think that's what Conan is going to have to do on HBO Max, is he's going to have to... uh, He's going to go back to... have to go back to his roots, I think, where he is primarily a comedian. You know, there are sketches on the current iteration of the Conan show, um, and I think he's going to really have to try and try try and create something that's fresh and original. Because, like I say, if I want to go and watch an interview right now, all I have to do is go on YouTube and search in, you know, whoever, whoever, whoever mm-hmm. interview. Um, people don't want to watch that long form content anymore. They want to watch something that's short, snappy, gets to the point, and shows the product that this celebrity is selling. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they'll have to find a new way of doing it. Um, whether or not it's a success, um, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. Hmm. Uh, Sukena, some of the people, some of the critics, some of the fans, they're trying to look 
for the reasons why you know he he took this leap of faith some say that podcasts have killed the late night talk shows because uh, we've also seen o'brien you know from hosting long late night shows to a very short podcasts uh, with his favorite guests uh, as if he figured out that he does not you know um, need to do these long late night shows anymore so do you agree with this that you know since he has switched to podcasts and he has he has started enjoying um, you know, doing his shows that way. Do you agree with this statement? Um, I don't think I agree. No, I don't agree with that. Um, I think he's just trying to keep up and that's just how it is in the industry. Um, back to what Sam was saying, I think he, he does need to be more creative, needs to sort of come up with new ideas of, of how to stay fresh and, and you know, relevant <clears throat> because yeah, people don't want long form content anymore. We just want something that's quick and there available for us to watch. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's anything to do with podcasts. Um, I think he he knew that he needed to take this next step in order mm -hmm. to continue this career. Um, and he just needs to keep up with all the trends at the end of the day. Um, things are changing and we kind of do need to start adjusting to that. Um, and as much as we all kind of wish that we could have our favorite talk show hosts um, go on forever, that's not gonna happen. Right. So they do need to adjust to things and they do need to keep up with what is going on in the industry. So mm -hmm. it is all becoming very social media based. Um, and I guess that's kind of the route that he's taking with HBO Max. But yeah, I'm very excited to see what's gonna happen. I'm interested to see who these special guests are as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, lots to look right. forward to. And, and Sam, what are your thoughts? Do you think that podcast uh, has actually played a role in his decision? Um, I mean, it's probably helped the decision. Um, like I mentioned before, he, he wants to explore new mm -hmm. creative avenues. Uh, it, it, you get formulaic in that respect. You know, he's been doing this program for, like, like uh, it, it was mentioned, uh, 28 years mm -hmm. or, or 11 years during the current iteration. And um, it just becomes stale and you, you get bored um, doing that kind of thing. So, yeah. you know, there's only so many interviews that you can do. Um, so the HBO Max move will hopefully sort of reignite his love for doing um, what, what he loves, I'm guessing. You know, uh, at, at home, he's been at home hosting the show uh, over the past year during coronavirus. You can tell because hmm. he switched out his sort of lavish suits for kind of just just leather jackets mm -hmm. and his hair is becoming a bit more unkempt than it usually is. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I do kind of agree that the podcasts are the way forward mm -hmm. um, in terms of the way, like I said before, you just want to get the interview there in front of you and watch it um, without having to look at all this long form content. The other mm -hmm. thing that I think that he is probably taking into consideration is that at the moment, and it's sad to say, sorry Conan if you're watching, um, mm. but um, he is fourth in the greatest, um, you know, talk show hosts in America. You've got the likes of Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy mm. Fallon, James Corden, yeah. and then always then is Conan O'Brien. So he's got that stiff competition and then not to, you know, discourage the likes of um, Stephen Colbert and, and various mm. other talk show hosts out there. Um, it, the, he, he, he is essentially fighting for his position in the and talk show host. He, he uh, has some other yeah. unique selling points as well, like being a writer to uh, The Simpsons and SNL. So he will be remembered uh, as, you know, as a writer as well. Uh, and a very friendly personality, in fact. I mean, he was the one who would never belittle his, his, uh, his guests on, uh, on, on set. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And that I think will, he will be remembered for doing yeah. that because I don't think he's out to cause controversy. There's a lot of these talk show hosts who like create uh, what we call clickbaity content, where yeah. you'll look at a video and you'll go, "Oh, I want to watch that because it's got something controversial in." I don't think he outwardly uh, sets out to do that. You know, I, I do a bit of uh, TV hmm. presenting and hosting here in Cardiff, and um, when right. when I'm out and I'm chatting to people, um, the one rule that I've been taught is. Or it's always about them and not about you. Mm -hmm. So the moment it starts becoming about you, um, then then you you've completely right. let let right. let down the you know the, the game the game is over essentially. Right. So so Conan, um, I think, he, yeah, he seems like a very nice man with great hair. Mm. <laughs> right, uh, Sukena and Sam, thank you very much indeed for your time and discussion. Thank you for having me.
That was Sam and Sakena sharing their thoughts on Conan O'Brien, who sets an end date for his late night talk show on TBS. And now, moving to our other story details of the day. Judge orders Kevin Spacey accuser to reveal his identity. The judge ruled on Monday that the man accusing Oscar winner actor Kevin Spacey of sexually abusing him in the 1980s when he was 14 cannot proceed anonymously in a court. According to the Associated Press, the man is seeking over $40 million in damages. Electronic music producer Pierce Fulton died at age 28 on Thursday night following a tragic struggle with his mental health. The DJ's older brother, Griffith, announced the devastating news in a heart-wrenching statement across Pierce's social media accounts on Monday. Bruce Willis has found not one new project but three, signing on to star in an action trilogy entitled The Fortress. Willis will star alongside Jesse Metcalf and Chad Michael Murray in the trilogy, along with Kelly Grayson. The story centers around a top-secret resort for, to for retired U.S. intelligence officer, which gets breached by a group of daring criminals led by Murray. Fans just got their very first peek at Marvel's upcoming movie, The Eternals. Directed by recently minted Academy Award winner Chloe Zhao and starring Gemma Chan, Angelina Jolie and Kumail Nanjiani. The brief glimpse of the movie comes in second half of a new Marvel trailer advertising the brand's upcoming slate. It includes narration about being together and experiencing stories as a group. And even a simple movie announcement from Marvel can excite the fans and we cannot wait already. That is it from the newsroom. We will be right back after a quick short break. Stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Welcome back. In this segment, we will be talking about the trends of rock band music in Pakistan. There was a time when Pakistani music industry was oozing out with rock bands, but after 2010, this trend started to fade away, and now we barely see bands adorning the screens. To discuss this further, we have a musician and an actor, Mukit Khan, with us. Mukit, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Nasheen. I would like to congratulate you to initiate a show like that, which can actually focus on the real problems that the musicians are facing. So, Thank you. a big shout out to Thank you for you. this. Thank you very much, Mukit. So, uh, Pakistani music, you know, it can boast about, about its versatility, especially when it comes to evolving to rock and pop. Uh, and a lot of bands would, you know, form back in those days from ex exclusively from if, if we talk about 80s and 90s and even till 2010. But after that, the trend start, started to fade away. Uh, what are the reasons, the possible reasons behind that? The main possible reason is, A, uh, we're lacking on the music industry itself, like uh, Turns out all the record labels faded away and uh, the trends have changed. The uh, Back in the days, the trend used to be like people used to, the bands used to release their albums and they used to get their royalties out of it. Mm -hmm. They used to get the distribution mm -hmm. and you know, all the exposure out of it. Now it's more like how much social media presence do you have as a band, you know? If you are able to target your audience directly on social media, that's what sells. Uh, bands used to compile a 12 track or 15 mm -hmm. track or 10 track album and used to sell that out in the market. Now it's mm. easily av available for all the fans out there who can, you can directly approach, you know. So the trends have changed. I mean, the uh, the trends have uh, come mm. more towards the single side, releasing a single by a single by a single like every month, rather than releasing a whole album. And you know, people won't notice each and every track mm. of yours like that because the pace has changed. Now mm. we have next button in our, uh, in our cell phones, you know. If you don't mm. like a track, you change it. So it's right. just gotten that simple. So back in the days, we ha you used to have tape recorders when we used to rewind a song. We knew exactly how much to rewind to yeah. get to that song. And, you know, <laughs> so now it's not like that. It's like a quick, quick, quick. If somebody likes the song, they're going to keep uh, listening to it. If they don't, tuck. All right. So, Mukit, do you think that there, a possible reason could be that the audience no longer have that ear for organic music or the type of music that these rock and pop bands would create? That, that is no longer, you know, uh, befriending the ears of modern audience. Do, do you think that could be a possible reason as well? That's absolutely true. I mean, world over pop music and EDM is taking over. The club music has picked up, you know, and the rock bands have eventually started fading away. Especially in Pakistan, if you think of it, back in the uh, uh, late 90s and early 2000s, 
especially the other days mm-hmm. when Atif Aslam and Jal released their Adat, you know, it, that song itself was a single, you know, that's how they release it and they mm-hmm. got their fame out of it. So, uh, that was a trend where, uh, and then there used to be Pepsi Battle of the Bands, which was promoting a lot of bands out mm-hmm. there. And, you know, it was the, the times when RO, EP, and all these bands, Mikalas mm-hmm. and Band came out, came out. And, you know, there was such good music happening in our industry. And that program actually gave so much exposure to these bands that they actually made a career out of it. Mm-hmm. Now, the same program is going on. And for the past two years, three years, I think, but none of those bands are making as big as they used to back in the days when uh, in early 2000s, you know. So this trend has changed. Uh, when I played songs for my family or whenever we listened to songs, we used mm-hmm. to listen to Bon Jovi, you know, uh, some sort of rock and roll inspiration. Brian Adams, these were our mm-hmm. childhood bands, right? But now, mm-hmm. the other day, I listened to my uh, nieces play some music and I swear they played for like one hour. All of the songs were EDM. And these are kids. Mm-hmm. We don't redirect them what music to listen to. It's just mm-hmm. what they like, you know. So the, the trends are changing. I'm an EDM fan as well. Mm-hmm. Deep down inside, I'm a rock and roll fan, but I do love EDM a lot. And the trends are changing and people are loving that more. So there's nothing you can, uh, you know, you can't force people to follow mm-hmm. a certain type of music. Whatever pleases your heart is the right kind of music for you. So yeah, yeah the times have changed and bands are fading because of that. Uh-huh. And Mukib, do you think that there still is a need for forming new bands because we have seen a lot of solo perform- performers, you know, uh, even creating rock music and pop music. Uh, do you think that rock bands are still needed and they can make a difference if, they're, if they start to reform? They definitely can make a difference. But uh, the thing is, that the sound has changed so much that I'm not sure if the new generation is uh, very fond of rock music anymore, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in our times, those were the days when we used to listen to rock bands live, especially Karwan, EP. There was so, so many live, uh, Nuri, mm. you know, for instance. So these bands actually had the energy that to keep you, you know, in in that group. Now it's it has changed. A simple man comes around with his laptop. I mean, no offense, and his turntables. And it's like not almost live, but he's doing th- those things live. But it sells more. It pleases mm-hmm. the people more. The EDM festivals have had picked up before Corona. And so these things are taking over, which is fine. I mean, uh, trends are changing. Maybe the bands should follow more of that mm. side of music as well. Like there's so many bands. Uh, for instance, Radiohead has mm. a somewhat EDM psychedelic side to them. And they have a rock side to them as well. So, you know, uh, those guys are still in my favorite list. I mean, uh, I never think, uh, I don't think I can ever get over Radiohead and their music because it has both the trends. So there are some bands who actually follow that and are still alive in our hearts. And there have been one-hit wonders who just came, uh, sold like a couple of concerts because of one track and then eventually faded away realizing that they don't have any scope anymore, you know. So yeah, the trends uh, are kind of scary for rock musicians, but Mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially the bigger platforms, they need to promote more rock music to actually keep it in the, you know, uh, to Mm -hmm. keep it in, in the picture. Like for instance, Coke Studio, Battle of the Bands, any of the shows, uh, Nescafe Basements, the Basement. So if these guys focus on rock music, there's going to be an audience who's going to keep on following the mm-hmm. rock and roll. Otherwise, eventually, we're all going to be dancing to EDM, you know. Right. <laughs> and, and no are, offense to that. Are you happy with the fusion uh, that, that is being experimented with rock and pop music? I mean, we have been experiencing this sort of fusion previously in Pakistani bands like you know, Janoon mixing their, their genre with the Sufi uh, music. Mm-hmm. But now trends, like you have said, that they've completely changed and EDM has taken over. So are you happy with the fusion, with, with this sort of experimenting uh, with rock and pop genre? I'm totally cool with all the genres. I listen to all genres, uh, even jazz, uh, blues, name any, and I listen to everything, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm cool with the pop and I'm cool with rock, you know. I, I, I'm easy going with that. I'm totally loving the new side of music as well. I mean, it's not new. It has been there since 70s, 80s. The synthesizers and this, these sounds have been there for a very long time. We've been listening to a lot of... You'll remember Ace of Waves, there was Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of musicians who actually had the synths and these pop feels to them. And we always loved them. So now they're coming back to life and, you know... Uh, what do you call that? Uh, this is band. Daft Punk. Mm-hmm. Still have the 80s sound to them. They still have the modern music, music, music to mm-hmm. it, live drums to it. And, you know, it was a totally mind-blowing album that I listened to. Mm-hmm. So those kind of su- sounds are going to survive. Sadly, uh, Daft Punk split up and they're not there anymore. But that mm-hmm. kind of sound is still like 
living in our hearts. I, the album came out in, uh, I think, 2011 or 12. And it's okay. still like in my playlist and it just doesn't fade away. So uh, this goes out for the bands as well that they need to focus. Uh, they need to realize what the people like as well, right? I mean, mm -hmm. staying stay true to your music is one thing. The people are going to love your honesty to your music. But mm -hmm. on the other side, side you got to mold slightly towards the side that they're looking for as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've played, I've played uh, rock concerts. I've mm -hmm. sang like rock anthems at places where people don't even know what rock and roll is. And I've seen their faces looking at me like, mm -hmm. what is this, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had to realize, I had to realize that, you know, I'm a rock musician. I know I growl, mm -hmm. I know we play very heavy music, but we do need to uh, focus on the fact that these people like pop. So then we started adding mm -hmm. some pop tunes to our uh, set list. And as soon as we started doing that, people were actually dancing uh -huh. to, it, uh, to it rather than looking at us that, who are we, are we aliens or what? So, Mukit, being 90s kids, we had a lot of favorite bands, but eventually we saw them being broken. So, what possible reasons could there be for these brands to, these bands to be, you know, broken up? The thing there is, uh, this is like a bunch of musicians living together, trying to grow into a sound. Eventually, when they uh, start sounding the same and they think that this is the kind of sound we want, they start releasing it, they get the fame out of it, they get the spotlight out of it, and, you know, so mm. that thing keeps on going until there's five musicians, everybody has their own commitments in their personal mm. life. Well, it's not just music that they do. They, are, they got families, they got their mm -hmm. commitments, commitments, you know, they got their so social ties. So keeping uh, five, six musicians together for like more than five years seems yeah. kind of impossible to me because people end up growing into different people after like five years. That's mm -hmm. not the kind of music that they want to do anymore. Or maybe they're looking for a new sound or maybe they want to mm -hmm. do the sound that they always wanted to do and now they realize that, you know, this is my band sound, but me as a musician, that's the kind of sound I'm looking for. So these mm -hmm. kind of things, you know, when you're playing music, you actually know it. If you're feeling it or you're just doing it for the audience, you know. Mm -hmm. So you got to figure that out. And uh, I think this is the main reason why bands, after a certain mm -hmm. uh, amount of time, they decide, they decide to actually change their direction and go solo. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, Nuri did this. Mm -hmm. They have been a very tight rock and roll band, you know, for a very long time. A mm -hmm. pop rock band as well, you know. And uh, after like such a long time, I, I always used to quote this to people that Nuri is the only band that's mm -hmm. not going to split up because these are two brothers. So they'll never mm -hmm. split up, right? Because in bands, it's like there's ego mm -hmm. problems, there's whatnot that goes around. And eventually mm -hmm. people part their ways. So Nuri was the only band that I used to think will never split up. But turns out that those guys need mm -hmm. to find a new sound as well. They're done with releasing three albums sounding pretty much the same, but very tight sound that fans love. But mm. those guys have overgrown that. So, so we hope that this trend, you know, gets revived someday because there is still some room for rock bands and pop bands in Pakistan. Mukit, thank you Absolutely. very much indeed for your time and discussion. Thank you so much, Nasheen. That was Mukit Khan discussing the Pakistani rock music bands and the trend that has started to fade away. But we hope that this will revive once again and we will be seeing more rock bands in future. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. Until next time, take care. Goodbye.